What's up guys, Grimmix V here. In today's video, uh, we're gonna be covering the questions from the Q&A session we had with Jeremy back in the uh, Battle Rising tournament for February. That took place actually last Sunday for anyone that missed it. You can still view the VODs for both the EU and NA attorneys on the V Arena Twitch channel. Um, the EU attorney was actually the one that hosted the Q&A for anyone curious, so Definitely be sure to go check that out if you haven't. I do still plan to do a highlight reel video. Uh, and actually this time it's not gonna be just in a uh, matches. It'll also inc include some EU ones. So keep an eye out for that one uh, as well. Just kind of trying to find time to get that one thrown together right now. It's been a bit hectic this week. Uh, in the meantime though, I did want to go ahead and get this video out. It is gonna be a different approach to today's video. It's gonna unedit it, so it'll be my first time kind of doing something like this. So definitely let me know what you guys think below. Um, but anyone wanting to read this for themselves or you know follow along with me, you can actually find this on the official uh, the arena Discord. I've got a link in the description down below for that. Um, but let's go ahead and dive in here. Uh, and by the way, we're not going to cover all these. We are going to cover, I think, the, the pertinent ones. So first question is, will we get extra hot bar slots specifically for potions or consumables in general? Meaning, you know, explosives, blood, golems, um, you know, even maybe things like your fishing rod, which sadly it sounds like uh, we're not currently. You know, Jeremy said that that's not currently planned. So kind of disheartening to hear for anyone that missed it in my last video covering the 24th dev blog. We found out that we're actually going to be getting a uh, slot reduction. So we're going to be going from nine down to eight in order for there to be parity with the PS5 release. So that one hurts a bit. Um, hopefully this gets addressed in the future or, you know, if not, I'm sure we'll all adjust. But uh, I know I was kind of hoping we would get something along those lines, too. Uh, moving on, it's, the next question was, will Behemoth Shard be reworked? Its impact is currently much lower than the other two in battle. Jeremy said shards will get additional slash new stats, which are not available on other items, including Behemoth. So really exciting to see. I'm curious what they mean by new stats not being available on other items. I think it'd be awesome if we got something like, um, like for anyone that's fought Winged Horror, you know that it gives the kind of DLT burn effect that Chaos does. Uh, I know that we can get that effect right now if you put it on, I think, Power Surge, uh, you, and, uh, you know, it, it applies that burn effect to auto attacks. It'd be really cool if wearing the Behemoth Shard neck, or uh, excuse me, the Winged Horror necklace, if you got that kind of passively with that, whether that be an extra DOT tick on abilities or autos like Surge does, or even if you were to have Behemoth Shard, if you maybe got something like the... Uh, little uh illusion wisp that spawned during the boss battle maybe that spawns around your character periodically and, and damages things so that that would be pretty awesome to see too so kind of a lot of potential with that one uh next question was after the shard sh shard change will shard holders be visible on the map at all times jeremy said this is still being discussed and will be thoroughly tested in the beta so the way that i hope they implement this if they do it at all I think the best way would be some sort of a pulse system to where maybe it, um, you know, maybe it, it populates every two to five minutes or, you know, some sort of uh, time to where it's like a pulse effect, you know, so you're kind of doing like echo location. Uh, I think anything other than that would be really oppressive and would make the shard holder not want to actually leave the base with the necklace. Um, and you know, the reason why I think that'd be fair, even if they don't include any tracking is because you already can hunt these guys down at the end game events, right? They said that they're going to have to take them there to recharge them. So I think you wouldn't really want to take, uh, you know, I know if I had a shard anyway, I wouldn't want to be like feeling like I'd be pressured to leave it at base or not take it out just cause I'm going to be focused. Um, and, but you know, maybe you want that. So I think to kind of split it down the middle, they should definitely have it included as a server option, first of all. And then outside of that, I think it'd be really cool if it was just sort of like echo location so that they got, you know, for example, punished if they are taking too long in, a, in an area farming, but, uh, also to where they're not just getting mobbed the second they, you know, step out of their base. Um, next question is, will the issue with defensive skills being canceled but still going on cooldown be fixed? And it looks like the next question is also referencing that as well. It's uh, Water the Dam currently disrupts defensive abilities. Will this persist in 1.0? To both of these, Jeremy pretty much just said that the overall jankiness we see with combat right now will be addressed in 1.0. Um, 
curious to, to, to know what address means, so I'm kind of definitely keeping my eye out on this one. For the cooldown question, for anyone that doesn't know, if you're fighting and you get hit by something like a crossbow E or a spear Q or displacement, and it just so happens to take place like right at the same time you're pressing a defensive, like a counter or barrier, what will happen a lot of times is it'll just eat it and go on cooldown, right? And it feels really bad. This actually happens with dashes as well. Um, so hearing that that'll be addressed is really awesome. I'm personally kind of curious about what all is defined as jankiness though is it just that or is it also going to be things like you know sword Q going through defensives and barriers or like the ward of the dam displacement uh canceling out defensive and barriers and in general with the knockback jewel uh you know there's a lot of, of things like that that i think i've never really gotten a clear answer on whether or not it's intended like is crossbow e supposed to be a disruptor for abilities and stuff or is that just a bug that made it salute through you know we don't really we don't really know um, I think it'd be cool if certain weapons did have interactions like that. I just think that it should be more options. Um, well, let, let me take that back. Not necessarily more options, but I think it's a way to make some of the less useful weapon abilities uh, relevant again. Like Sword Q, the only time you do want to use that is during a defensive. So that one, I would say, is the only one that feels kind of balanced to me. If, you, if I'll be so bold to say that, um, I think another good option would be something like Spear E. Anyone used to using Spear E right now, you know that it's really only ever a good idea if you're in a raid situation and trying to pull someone into or out of a door. Outside of that, you're pretty much memeing if you do it. Um, but I think having that ability do something like be the only way to kind of get abilities through curtain or something like that could, um, could, could go a long way towards bringing some longevity and, and kind of flexibility or I guess the word I'm looking for there is usefulness out of the skill again um, next we've got will we get faster update cycle for in 1.0 or still yearly updates for content what about balance patches so Jeremy said hot fixes will come quicker and balance patches more regularly no information on other types of updates so I think this one is pretty self-explanatory just you know are we gonna wait for a year again are we gonna have to wait for months just to hear about what they're working on or are we gonna get some smaller patches with uh, more frequency I think doing that will go a long way towards improving player retention if they do take that step I'm hoping that since 1.0 is supposed to be you know the full game that we will start to see just some more um, you know, even just balance changes, you know, something with more frequency, I think that goes a long way towards keeping the game fresh. You know, we get stuck in these metas right now from a PvP aspect, at least, to where things get kind of stale. And I think even for PvE, if they were to, like, tweak certain bosses, that can make that fun to where, uh, you know, it's not the same old boring routine. Maybe they uh, make a boss do more damage or less damage. You know, it could really, it could really be anything. Just some type of update will keep players interacting in the, uh, in the uh, state of the game. Sorry, my work alarm's going off here. Trying to get this one out. Um, let's see. Will blood be rebalanced? Oh, actually, no. Before that, will we get a new spell school? So this one, Jeremy said, new spells are incoming, but they might not merit a new school. I kind of didn't know we were getting new spells. I think I might have heard that mentioned at some point during one of the dev blogs uh, last year. Uh, but this is pretty exciting. So I'm interested to see what all that means and, and what they'll kind of roll out with that one. Uh, will blood be rebalanced warrior scholar etc mutant and blue for blue bread for example feel underwhelming while warrior feels very strong in pvp jeremy said a new blood type is being added and blood types are being rebalanced so super excited to hear about the rebalance um the warrior is very strong right now in pvp and i think that's strictly because of parries i think without parries it, there'd be a lot more flexibility in what you play so hopefully they kind of address that and maybe even take a look at removing the RNG factor from Bloods in general. So like not only Warrior, but also the free resets you get with Scholar can sometimes be nuts as well. Um, as far as a new Blood type being added, it'd be interesting to see what they do with this. I kind of figured we were getting one because we got one with the mutants that were added to the game with the Gloomrod expansion. So with this next zone being a whole new type of mob as well, I presume we'd get one. Uh, I'd be curious to see what they do, though, whether this will be a, a more combat focused one or kind of more of a utility and defensive one like the mutant blood was. Uh, but whatever it is, I hope it is unique and gives incentive to play it, because I think right now 
The only real reason to kind of go out there and get mutant blood is if you want to do something like uh, run silver from the uh, silver mine to your base. Um, next questions here that I want to cover, talk about are dedicated towards raiding. He said, will raiding be rebalanced right now? Raid defense is really strong. To that one, Jeremy said raiding will not get a massive overhaul, but general raid balancing will be looked at. And then the next one pertaining to that is will stairs become breakable? Uh, breakable stairs are difficult to implement, but it will be looked at. So first off, I don't think we're going to get anything on rating anytime soon, especially not in the initial 1.0 release, uh, unless it's like super last minute, because it's clear to me that the focus is around open world PVP and drawing vampires out of their castle to, to get that PVP excitement. So uh, if we do get some sort of balance or update to rating, I think it would just be cool if they made it even more centered around the heart so that, you know, when you get to the heart, uh, the raid essentially ends there. Uh, how they would do that, whether they add some sort of valuable resource to it or some other incentive, I have no clue, but it'll be interesting to see what they do uh, in regards to that. Uh, this is one about tombs and performance. Uh, he just said game performance should be overall improved. Uh, this one right here. Okay, this is the next big one I want to talk about. It's uh, any thoughts on reworking, nerfing, Reworking or nerfing healing potions to prevent people from getting the full effect of a potion despite getting hit thanks to shields such as Phantom Ages. Okay, before we read the answer, I want to clarify on this. This feels terrible in the context, um, or not in the context, but when it happens to you in open world, it feels absolutely brutal, right? Of course, if you get stuck in a stun or a spear cue or some sort of displacement where your animation gets changed, this doesn't apply. But let's say you're open world and you're fighting some guy and you're, you have used all your abilities, you're chasing him around the corner, he's really low, he's almost about to die. All he has to do in that situation, if you have no cooldowns, is pop Aegis and drink a potion. I mean, it doesn't matter how many times you're poking him with your, your spear or whatever weapon, as long as that shield doesn't get to his actual HP bar, he can just sit there and pop a potion in your face. And it feels terrible. Um, so to that, Jeremy said, the way healing items work themselves will not change significantly, but their effect persisting through hits because of shields will be looked at. So it sounds like they are going to address this. I just really hope they understand the issue. I think Jeremy does. Um, you know, it sounded like he did when I was listening back to it on the stream. So to me, the simple fix would just be to make it to where if you get hit while you have a shield up, it interrupts the uh, drink animation of the potion, just like it does if you get hit without a shield. I mean, that I'm not a developer. I don't know how, you know, difficult that is to implement, but that is the obvious uh, approach to fixing that one in my mind. So really hoping they do that one. Um, will there be more fights in open world? I already talked about that. Um, kind of, you know, they're, they're, the new zone will encourage open world fights through interesting objects slash events. So that's another nod towards them wanting to keep things more focused on open world PvP. Next question is, will the legendary system get an RNG rework? We still get, will we get more agency on legendary weapon infusion slash stats? What about jewels? Jeremy said, a new legendary system is coming and rare weapons, meaning the blue ones, should also be changed in the process. But removing the RNG, uh, and removing the involvement of RNG in the character building process is not currently planned. Um, so to kind of simplify that, what that means is that as far as you getting the specific roles you want, or I know that, you know, something that was proposed, I think during the last beta was whether or not we would be able to just use a device to pick a certain modifier from the legendary weapon and re-roll it that way. Um, doesn't sound like that aspect of it is going to be changed, but they are going to be looking at the progression tree and um, reevaluating when you should get, you know, each stage of the weapon in the game. So, um I don't really have any adverse or really any thoughts in general around that. I think them addressing the blue weapon specifically is going to be huge because right now I really don't feel incentivized to actually build them in the current state of the game. Um, so it'd be cool to see what they do as far as the progression for that one. 
this is one about full loot servers becoming more popular. Jeremy said making full loot more popular might come at the price of, price of making the people that truly enjoy it less attracted to it. Uh, guys, I mean, this one to me is self-explanatory. I don't really see what they would do to in incentivize that. It's one of those things where you either love it or you hate it. It's just like hardcore mode and like Path of Exile or, you know, one of those other type of games like Diablo. Um, it's just really going to ap appeal to a certain part of the population. Uh, any changes planned on fishing? Jeremy says yes, but it might not be what you'd expect. Um... I'm currently expecting them to address the loot table just because I'd like to see more fish when I actually fish instead of getting things like, you know, jewels or gems or whatever. Um, but it'll be cool to see what they what they have on that. I think they also released a post on X uh, kind of hinting at fishing this past week. So, um, you know, maybe we'll actually see something on this in the next dev blog as well. We'll see. Uh, this is a nod towards the blood key and it never being used. Jeremy just simply said blood key will have a purpose. It's a key after all. They actually mentioned that in the 23rd dev blog as well. So I would like to see this be something with the Dracula in-game boss slash dungeon that we actually had in like the original beta of the pre, you know, like pre Gloomrot beta. Um, or if not, you know, I, I think it'd be cool if we had some sort of like instance dungeon or like some sort of cross server queue but um i don't know probably not because this isn't really the game for that but i don't know it'd be cool to see what they do with this one um next it is will horse breeding be part of the base game jeremy said no but there is a special horse being added to the game to me that just means we're either going to be getting a new horse skin or maybe the new end game zone has like uh maybe like a, a ghoul horse or you know i mutated horses something along that aspect but i can't really see them adding like another custom ability to horses after the vampire horse that kind of seems like everything we would ever want um so yeah i'm not not really sure on that one but it'd be be interesting to see what they do um are you considering considering facilitating modding as a concept from modding itself to the longevity of mods throughout future patches Jeremy said modders might get an easier time of modding for 1.0 and beyond with the transition to a new engine. Um, that's actually not all he said. I listened back to the stream and he also mentioned that I think modders will be getting access to the server side of things earlier this time around. So that's definitely good to hear. Um, especially with the mods we have now, right? It took us a long time once Gloomrot released to actually get things like kill feed again. Um, you know, we've got kill feed, we've got the first person mod, we've got stash, horse breeding, and then we've got all the awesome mods that V Arena themselves are putting out, like the uh, Battle Rising or Pancake game modes. So definitely good to hear that those might not be affected as drastically this time around. And then in closing here, it just says, be sure to look out for the next two dev blogs as some of the questions here will be addressed in more detail. PvP balance is important to SLS and 1.0 should make balance changes easier for them. And remember that the game will change a lot with 1.0. So I think on the stream also, Jeremy kind of hinted that we were due for dev blog, which I think we are. So we'll probably be seeing that, I'd imagine, within the next couple of weeks or so. Um, so hopefully we'll get some more exciting information to keep us hype on that. But that is it, guys. I kind of rushed through those last minutes there because I do have to get to work. But I'm going to go ahead and post this kind of as is. Let me know what you think about this approach. If you love it, if you hate it, if you want to see more of it, just let me know. Um, but, yeah, as always, appreciate you guys a lot. Thank you for watching. And, psych, also, one more thing I wanted to mention. Um, if you did not know, V Arena is going to be launching their open world server like literally today at 6 p.m. for me. I don't know what time it is for you, but you if you love the game, if you want to PvP, this is the place to be, guys. I can't emphasize that enough. They are doing so much to this. Like, it, seriously, if you have a moment, just go and look at all the custom events and game modes and everything that they're adding. This is going to be absolutely crazy. Um, so, yeah, you'll definitely be seeing some videos from me coming out on this. I'm probably going to do a wipe day video. I uh, might not be live streaming it just because of background noise with my daughter, but if things are quiet when it launches, I'll definitely be on Twitch as well. So be on the lookout for the announcement for that. But uh, anyway, that's it, guys. Love you all. Appreciate you, and I'll see you next time. Peace.